you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. You'll forgive me if I, I, I may start, but given the Prime Minister's uh, preferences for both Fancy Castles and Peppa Pig, uh, he's very welcome to come and visit uh, Zog Playland at Warwick Castle. This week. <laughs> In Warwick and Leamington, as across the country, uh, cost of living crunch is really serious. Energy bills, as we've heard, looking to double by the end of this year. Yeah. Food up 10 to 15 per cent by year end. Fuel already 22 per cent up uh, year on year. It must be hard for the Prime Minister to stay in touch with financial reality, given that donors and friends pay for flights and holidays and many of his bills. And we also have, we also have a $200 million man chancellor, a $200 million chancellor who's so out of touch, he's so out of touch, so out of touch, he's contactless. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the public believes. You will be sitting down, so please. I hope we've come to the end of the question. Yeah. Prime Minister. So out of touch is contactless. Mr Speaker, the public believes the government... Shut up and be quiet. Behave yourselves. I hope that's the end of the question. I think the Prime Minister's got the gist of it, because I certainly am. Prime Minister. Okay. Can, I, can I say to the Honourable Gentleman, much as I admire his... His style, I think, would be better as a sort of a light essay in The Guardian. What we're doing, Mr. Speaker, is, is tackling, the, tackling the cost of living uh, by dealing with the spike in energy prices and making sure that we take the right long term decisions to take this country forward, which right decisions uh, that party opposite can.